All right, moving on to protein docking. <clears throat> so, well, in actual protein docking is actually, uh, well, it involves the interaction of protein to substrate, okay, or protein to ligand, or protein-protein, but uh, basically, it's the analysis of protein docking is a bit complex. Okay? So what I'm going to cover here is basically just the process of how to do the docking itself. Uh, we will have a tutorial on this, unfortunately, usually, some people proceed dock after pro after docking. They will proceed with simulation, but we don't have time for that. And of course, okay, you won't be able to proceed with simulation because well, the computer lab okay, is non-functional, and you wouldn't want to install it in your computer because it requires a Linux system. Anyway, for protein docking, so we know that it is a computational uh, kind of analysis okay, or determination of protein complex structure from individual protein structure. Most of the time, like I was saying early on, okay, interaction of a protein with a substrate or protein with another protein. The substrate could be any substances, any compounds, and it could be, be, be even a ligand. Now, why do we need to do, or why is, okay, simply say, why do people do docking? So, most of the time, it actually, because biological activity depends on the specific recognition of proteins. And when we do, or when a protein docking is being done, okay, protein interaction network, okay, could be understood. Uh, whether it's in a cell or the contribution in systems biology as a whole and so forth. The third one is that it would yield insight okay, to thermodynamics of molecular recognition okay, because it is a prediction. So usually a prediction sometimes uh, is something that is useful before you proceed okay, with actual lab work or it could be kind of like an indicator. And the last one is that the experimental definition of protein protein complex structure remains difficult, requires a lot of time, well, I would say years, so protein docking okay, would give an insight, which is basically in a matter of, well, if you just proceed with docking, okay, it could be within a few minutes to a few hours, but probably if you proceed with a simulation, then it will take some, well, a few days up until a few months, depending on how big the proteins and the substance are. So the question that I have here is that, is docking important? Well, it depends from one person to another, but again, okay, in terms of a proteomic site okay, or a protein person such as me, I would say that it provides relevance in cellular biology to accomplish the function via protein protein or protein okay, other substances again okay, uh, components. So it is also one of the key components okay, to rational drug design because drug design would basically start off from the docking. They would want to see the interaction of the drug okay, to be well to be made or to be sold again. Okay, and the interaction again okay, with the target. So the result from docking can be used to find inhibitors for specific target proteins, especially for cancer drugs and so forth, okay, or any other drugs okay, whereby they would want to inhibit certain enzyme and also to design new drugs, especially very useful. Now, what are the types of study? Uh, well, there are only two types of study, okay, protein protein docking and protein ligand docking. So we also have another types of protein docking, but it's more specific to peptides, so it's actually out of this scope. So for protein-protein docking, it involves a uh, protein and another protein, and both molecules usually are considered as rigid, okay, which means that, well, simply say it is not that sensitive, but it remains rigid. So most of the time, okay, it has more or less six degrees of freedom. What we meant by that, again, okay, I will explain further in the later slides and in a later part of the video. And basically, it is also providing a search space and energetics of possible binding confirmation, trying to find the exact uh, or the suitable kind of binding okay, between two proteins. For protein ligand docking, okay, and it includes with another substrate, so sometimes okay, it could be a flexible ligand, it could be uh, in the form of rigid receptor as well, so it depends. And Usually, when you have reduced flexible ligand, okay, uh, it could basically be because of rigid fragments, which is connected by one or several hinges. Or sometimes, okay, you could search the conformational space okay, using molecular dynamics. If you are not satisfied with the docking, if you see that probably the interaction or the binding is not to your liking, you could always proceed with molecular dynamics. That's what we always do anyway. So, 
let's have a look okay, at the difference okay, between rigid and flexible docking. So rigid docking okay, basically means that there is no modification in bond angles, length and torsion angles of the components. You don't modify anything, you just put it there and then you just proceed with the command for the docking, that's it. But for flexible docking, usually it takes in the conformational changes. Okay, You tweak some of the parameters here and there to make sure that they could conform with one another so that they could bind much more uh, better. All right, so more or less, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, I'm sure everyone would have done, I'm not sure, hopefully, okay, everyone would have done jigsaw puzzle or at least know how a jigsaw puzzle is being done. So when you have two pieces, for example, over here, okay, or more pieces, okay, you try to connect them and find the suitable site, okay, where they would fit. That is the concept of protein docking. Okay, whereby when you have a ligand receptor, okay, the complex, okay, which means that, okay, when it binds, okay, so it conforms or it basically it more or less facilitates, okay, the downstream processes from the binding. So ligand usually binds to the active side of a protein. Now, okay, active side and binding side, it could be the same side or it could be different side. Okay, we will come to that. Binding usually leads to conformational changes in protein. This is where, okay, basically it will produce the output. And conformational changes, the thermodynamics, okay, which means that okay, sometimes the surrounding area uh, in terms of the torsion, okay, the angle, okay, and also the output. And of course, okay, for such docking, usually we would require the lowest Gibbs energy. What do I mean by Gibbs energy? Okay? Well, let's stay on. Now, let's have another comparison of the protein interactions okay, in terms of experimental versus computational uh, what we are talking about now in terms of the docking so bear in mind again okay, so on your left okay would be from the experiment lab work wet lab okay computational which means by dry lab okay or computer okay and usually you would prefer well apart from your laptop probably a supercomputer so for experiment okay usually it will require either x-ray crystallography or nmr okay but for computational, okay, you can just use any protein docking. There's a lot of protein docking uh, free online tool okay, available nowadays. Last time it was very limited and well, it only comes okay, from certain software that you purchase, but now it's free online. So binding affinity okay, between the two proteins okay, is basically via okay, the SPR okay, or titration assays and for the computational, of course, okay, binding affinity, affinity is via calculation from the algorithm provided. Now, for experimental work, okay, you can actually do mutagenesis and you could see its effect on the binding. Okay? You could also do mutagenesis analysis okay, via a computer, uh, basically computational, okay, whereby okay, analysis of spike specific mutation okay, could be done okay, depending on the kind of software that you use. Not all docking okay, would provide that. You need to find much more specific software for that. So for the experimental, okay, usually it will be uh, followed okay, by either yeast to hybrid or protein chips okay, to determine the interaction. Okay? So for computational, okay, usually you can get the protein design later on okay, if well, drug design is your aim. And usually this is from the result of the docking and some other analysis for the analysis. And apart from that, you can also get some kinetics of protein, protein interaction by further analysis of the docking component. So those are the side-by-side -side comparison. And as you can see, this could be done in a matter of hours, uh, up until a few days, up until a few months. Uh, you don't really need that much time unless you want to interpret the data and well, follow on with further analysis. But for the experimental, okay, usually, well, I would say the least you could spend is six months if you're lucky. Okay? But most of the time, okay, it will take years, two years if you're lucky, usually more than that. Now, what are the docking requirements? So, of course, first and foremost, you need to have the 3D structure of protein of interest. Okay? Hence, that's why okay, we cover the homology modeling beforehand because that is where you can get your 3D protein structure. So you can usually it is basically obtained by X-ray crystallography and NMR spectroscopy, and from there it is uploaded okay, into databases such as PDB. So next, you need to have again okay, docking tools or software, okay, which means that there are lots of different approaches. Okay, and these are some of the popular software 
and what I have here is just some and not limited to this, okay, but they are the most common that people have used. Dark or Z dark, okay? Auto dark or auto dark vena, uh, because it is actually more or less kind of like an improvement or another version of it. Again, dark and Z dark, auto dark and auto dark vena. Uh, we have gold. Uh, I actually have never used gold. I've just used a Z dark and auto dark, okay? I haven't really tried auto dark vena, but my students have done it. Uh, there is also Schrodinger, again, okay, in terms of glide, okay? Flex by Sewell and also Mo dark and a lot more but these are some of the famous okay or popular software that people use and you could basically come across this if you are doing some or basically search it for journals that have done some docking procedure and you will find okay this name the software that they use so the steps what are the steps so there are only five steps it's actually pretty easy uh well theoretically at least so the first step is the preparation of the ligands okay? or if you're working with another protein then the protein so you start with the crystal coordinates of target receptor you need to find okay, where it should bind to your protein second step generate molecular surface for the receptor so this has to be done okay for the ligand which means that okay, you need to be ensure okay and if well for, set, for, for some reason, okay, you couldn't find any information on it, okay, you could basically do the duration. Okay. If not, then usually okay, you can just uh, choose okay, the site okay, from the first step. Step three is the preparation of proteins, okay, either the, your protein of interest or both of the proteins if it is a protein-protein interaction. So you have to generate spheres to fill the active site of the receptor. So the spheres okay, would become potential locations for ligand atoms okay, for the binding. Okay, simply say. So number four. Oh, I'm not sure why the number over here is okay. It's a bit weird. Again, okay, sorry about that. Now step four okay, is to set up the ligand protein docking calculation or well protein protein okay, docking calculations. So usually we have a matching procedure, which means that the spheres okay would be centered okay, and then they are matched okay, to the ligand atoms to determine possible orientation for the ligand. So once you have done that, okay, you can just click okay, for the docking and then just wait for the result. So usually you can either wait for it okay, because it depends from one software to another. It could be a matter of a few minutes okay, or more than 10 minutes, 20 minutes okay, in less than one hour or more than one hour. So the last step, okay, step five, is that you need to evaluate your results. So everything about prediction via bioinformatics needs to be evaluated. So you need to get a scoring, okay? So you, oh yeah, sorry, you can see this, okay? So find the top scoring orientation. And basically when you do docking, okay, I would recommend to more than one time okay, so that you can always compare the results because uh, the thing with the computer is that okay, when you do docking, okay, from the first try to the second try to the third try or how many tries okay, that you did, usually the result would not be the same. You can get different scoring, so you can do a comparison and it would be better that way. Now, let's have a look okay, at the steps. So the step one is actually preparation of the ligand. Okay? Uh, and of course, again, okay, another protein okay, if possible. So a reasonable 3D structure is required as starting point. Now, you may be wondering if your ligand is a compound, let's say, a metabolite or DNA or RNA, how can you do that? Well, there are databases for that that could provide you for it, so don't worry. So, this is a, a, a crucial step, okay, because even during flexible docking, because we know flexible, which means that there is a degree of flexibility to allow binding, the bond length and the angles are usually held fixed, whereby you need to determine the site, okay, but the length, and the angle okay, will remain fixed as it is. So the protonation state and tautomeric form of a particular ligand could influence its hydrogen bonding ability. I think uh, in the next slide or in your notes, you can see what are the protonation state and the tautomeric form. So either the protonate as expected for physiological pH okay, could be used okay, and used as a single tautomer, okay, or you could generate and dock all possible protonation if you don't know which one to use. Okay. And of course, okay, you could always retain the one with the highest score later on. That's why I say okay, you can do a few others. So this is the difference between protonation and tautomer. So if you remember your chemistry on, if you like your chemistry, then you remember this. <laughs> okay, I know a lot of uh, biology students don't really like, well, they don't like calculation, they don't really like chemistry. Okay. So now for protonation, okay, it is... Uh, as the name says, okay, protonation, which means that addition of a proton. So it adds 
as a A plus one charge. Okay, so both the carboxyl and amino groups are sensitive to pH, okay, which is common. So the pH would then determine if a protein take up H plus or lose H plus. Okay, so when they lose like okay, H plus, okay, it is called deprotonation, and usually it is not desirable. Okay, for talking. So protonated, okay, simply say that it picked up H plus. Okay? For example, okay, from the amino side, okay, or basically from the N terminus, okay, and H three plus okay, later on, okay, after the addition of a proton. Okay, in terms of the C terminus, okay, so you could get a COOH okay, after it has been protonated. Versus tautomer, okay, tautomer are isomers, okay, of the same compound. And if you don't know what isomers is, okay, try to Google it up. Isomers, okay, which means that okay, they could form, uh, basically they are from the same compound, okay, but they may have different outlook or they may have different orientation, okay, as you can see from down here, some of the examples. So for tautomer especially, they only differ in the position of the protons and the electron, okay. See the enol form and the keto form, okay, lactam form and lactin form, okay. So how different they are again okay, only in the position of the atom and the electron okay so whereby you have oh you only have o and ch2 you have ch3 okay basically again okay, in terms of the molecular weight okay or basically uh not say molecular weight okay, for a molecular formula they are the same okay just that differ in the position of the proton and electron so the carbon skeleton of the compound is unchanged and when you have tautomer okay or tautomerism which means that a reaction of a simple proton transfer and you could basically modify it depending on which tautomer that you use okay for example either enol or keto form now moving on to step two which is the preparation of your protein structure and if you have two protein protein interactions so that means that you are preparing both of them so we get the protein structure from of course PV mostly okay we know that it is a repository of protein crystal structures okay and of course sometimes in complexes with inhibitors it could be useful, it could sometimes hinder your docking, so you need to choose wisely. So PDB structures usually often contain water molecules. So all water molecules need to be removed generally uh, as a procedure for docking, because if not, uh, then probably it would hinder okay, with the docking procedure. There is also an exception to this, okay, whereby okay, where it is known that if they play an important role in coordinating to the ligand, then you can just keep it. If not, then it would be better for you to remove all the water molecules available. So to know how much water molecules is available in your structure, you can always refer to the PDB. Okay, there are information in there. Now, step three okay, is okay, again, okay, even though uh, step two and step three okay, more or less uh, kind of like look the same thing. Okay, so what you need to bear in mind okay, in preparing your protein structure, PDB structures usually are mostly missing all hydrogen atoms because they have gone through docking and submission. And many docking programs usually require the protein to have explicit hydrogens. So in general, this can be added unambiguously, but there is an exception again, okay, whereby in the case of acidic or basic side chain. So you need to, again, okay, when preparing your protein, okay, make sure okay, that you uh, more or less check okay, whether you have a side chain or not. If you have a side chain, whether it's acidic or non acidic, oh sorry, acidic or basic. If it's non charged, then it's fine. But okay, if it is charged, okay, then basically you need to add in some hydrogen atoms to make sure that they are balanced. So the PDB structure usually can also be incorrect for particular protein side chains. And especially if you want to do a protein protein interaction, this could basically hinder in the docking process. Now, an incorrect assignment of protonation states, okay, basically in the active site, okay, will give poor result okay, because it's not in the correct alignment and binding probably would not be very efficient. So, some of a glutamate aspartate have CO or COH. So, the OH okay, is of course the hydrogen bond donor. Okay, o is not so you need to be very careful about that because like okay, the side chain this is basically more or less okay, sometimes it comes back to your side chain or the protein okay, that is involved okay, with the binding so another amino acid histidine okay, is also uh, has to be considered okay, because it is a base and its neutral form has two tautomers so you need to choose which one to use for this docking okay so 
Next, okay, crystallography usually gives electron density but not molecular structure. So that's why okay, usually if a poorly resolved crystal structures of a protein is generated, isoelectric groups can basically make it difficult to deduce the correct structure. And so usually sometimes people proceed with NMR, uh, but then probably couldn't be used as a backup. So if this occurs, and if by chance you have chosen a crystallography structure, or a PDB file okay, from a crystallography that is not that good, okay, it would affect asparagine, glutamine, and histidine amino acids, and especially if they are involved in the binding. How important is this? Is this okay? It would affect hydrogen bonding pattern, and hydrogen bonding pattern is actually crucial because it is one of the analysis that is compulsory to be studied <coughs> uh, from simulation or from docking. So you may need to flip. Uh, some amide or imidazole okay? so to overcome this problem but how do you decide that you need to look at hydrogen bonding pattern in crystal structure containing the ligand so like i said i guess well the steps like it seems simple when i summarize it but in detail each and every one of them is actually quite finicky it takes a lot of time now step number four okay the actual docking process so now there are many approaches that you can do this okay so i'll start with a random start position so most of the time starts with a decoy creation of a decoy so a decoy which means that something that you use give okay, more or less kind of like a comparison but also something you okay, get to trap it later on to make sure that it could give you a correct docking position so it begins with a random orientation of each partner and a translation of one partner along the line of protein centers to create a glancing contact between the protein. Apart from that, you can also do some row, sorry, low resolution Monte Carlo research. Uh, don't ask me how they got the name. <laughs> it's actually a very funny story, but okay, I'll just leave it to, to that. Okay. So in this low resolution Monte Carlo search, okay, one partner is translated and rotated around the surface of the other, which means that you try to flip it around, okay, rotate it around. So the score will then be based okay, in the correctness of each decoy and residue residue interaction terms. So every turn, every rotation, okay, it would give you a score. So you can just okay, later on okay, search and determine the best okay, interaction that you want to proceed. The next step, okay, uh, those two approaches are the most common that you start off with, okay. The next step is basically the high resolution refinement. So you could add side chains if your protein doesn't have side chains, okay, but be careful with it, okay. But usually uh, side chains are added to the protein backbones, okay, to change the energy surface and usually to load the energy uh, at the same time. So a filter is usually employed to detect inferior decoys and later on reject them without further refinement so that you eliminate okay, those that is uh, not associated with it. So apart from that, okay, another approach okay, that you can use okay, is by clustering and predictions. So simply said, this is usually left okay, for those who are, I would say expert or have done this quite a lot of times okay, because this will take a uh, a lot of consideration okay? because such procedure itself is repeated to create approximately 105 decoys per target that is the requirement uh, by a lot of the software so the 200 best scoring decoys are then clustered and the clusters with the most members are selected as the final predictions and ranked according to cluster sizes so it takes a lot of time uh, well basically usually just doing one docking could take you a few hours up until let's say one or two days okay this could take you days weeks or even months so the final step is the evaluation or the scoring function so to evaluate interactions okay this is done okay uh to discriminate the observed mode from others okay discriminate in terms of you want to find the highest or the best score okay or the best interaction so binding affinity of the complex needs to be worked out and energetically favorable complexes okay, has to be predicted. Low energy, definitely. And large number of degrees of freedom is usually also considered okay, because it means that okay, the torsion angle would be much larger so that it could twist and turn and you could basically play around with it as well. Now, for the protein docking, okay, this is my summary. 
prefer protein docking as it is like it's so probably would differ from one person to another but what i would summarize from protein docking is conformational change okay usually are tolerant okay to target functions which are needed for unbound docking what we what i meant for unbound docking okay, is that usually okay, when you dock okay, a protein to a ligand or protein to a protein okay, you want it to basically match but okay, if it doesn't match or if the software couldn't find a match okay, you can get an unbound docking okay so we basically also need to balance ship complementarity dissolvation and also electrostatic components uh, because uh, those basically would comes back okay, to giving you lowest possible energy and like i said okay if we submit 10 predictions we have about 60 percent success rate so the more that you predicted or the more that you dog okay, the higher okay, the success rate would be if you just proceed with only one and you say okay that's good enough i want to publish it okay usually uh during the publication the reviewer would ask how many times have you done this okay so if they found out that you have only done it once usually it will be rejected straight away just like that because protein docking usually has to be some has to be repeated because you need okay, to find the best possible interaction so there you have it my summary for protein docking now as a conclusion okay for protein docking so again again okay, it is an automatic protein docking protein protein docking server or protein ligand docking server so basically uh it involves large scale comparison of all docking algorithm on the benchmark and there's a lot i think hundreds or thousands of docking procedure that you could use online free so post processing with binding site information confirmation ship search clustering and detailed free energy calculation usually need to be done Okay, this is something that is crucial to ensure that your docking is satisfactory and especially if you were to proceed it with simulation or for design of new drugs okay? and of course the eh, protein docking is to make prediction again prediction is as good as prediction does okay? usually it needs to be followed okay, by the wet lab which we know will take a long time but again okay, it's as good as it gets so it actually gives you a first clue so that you don't make that many mistakes okay, in the wet lab so there you have it, protein docking.